We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Sailboat Market Breakdown. Now, right before we get started, I do just want to give a huge, huge shout out to all of my patrons. They are absolutely what keep the channel going. Now, I don't have any sponsors or anything like that. I don't try to sell you Japanese knives or green drinks or even counseling. I don't do that kind of stuff. I'm just trying to help you get on the water. And for only $10 a month, you do get access to my full members area with hundreds and hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later in the most cost-effective and time-efficient manner. So huge shout out to my patrons, as well as all of those people that leave me those super chats and super thanks. That's absolutely what keeps the channel and me able to pump out content every single day just for you. So thank you so, so much. And also don't forget to like the darn video. Hundreds of you show up for my YouTube premieres and I only get about a 10% like ratio. Don't lurk, like. Now I want to apologize in advance in case you hear a bunch of thunder and lightning or rain, a bunch of wind, a bunch of noise in the background. I apologize. We have a giant flood warning right now and a huge thunder and lightning storm outside. So if you hear a bunch of nonsense in the background, that's why. And I do apologize. All right. So we're picking up right where we left off yesterday. Our criteria, pretty simple, $150,000 and above today in the United States. The only reason I'm doing the United States, most of my audience is in the United States. Uh, so that's where we're at here. Now, remember yesterday I showed you all the really, really good deals at this price point. They're actually going to be an ex charter vessel. I discussed that in depth yesterday. So if you didn't catch yesterday's video, that's where all the deals are. Go watch yesterday's video uh, if you're in the $150,000 price range, just so you can understand the charter market and uh, what might work for you, what might not work for you. But it's absolutely worth considering if you're in this budget range. So here we are, 150 grand, and we're getting started right away. Now at $150,000, that's a ton of money. We're not going for old boats. We're not going to do it. The reason for that, everything on your sailboat has a lifespan. From your standing rigging, to your engine, your transmission, all of your seals, your running rigging, your sails. And at 20 years old, generally a boat needs to go through a major refit. That'll include replacing a lot of the things that I just mentioned, such as sails, standing rigging, running rigging. Now, one of the biggest issues in the world of used sailboats is your standing rigging. Most insurance companies want it replaced somewhere in the 15 to 20 year range. Now, a lot of brokers and sailboat owners will not replace it because it's expensive. Your average 40 foot boat's gonna cost you right around 4,500 to 5,500 bucks to replace that standing rigging. And a lot of people just try to stretch it as long as they can. And that is what leads to a whole bunch of disasters while you're out at sea. So we wanna look for a vessel that's already had it replaced. If we ever wind up being seriously interested in a vessel at that 20 year mark. Now, somebody will go out and do a rigging survey and they're going to tell you that uh, the rigging is fine, yada, yada, yada. It's just better safe than sorry. And spending this kind of money, we absolutely want to get a boat that has already had that done to it. We don't want to get into a vessel where we're going to have to turn around, drop 5,500 bucks and replace the standing rigging. That would make no sense whatsoever. So in this price range, you have a ton of options up to and even including motor yachts. Now, I need you to really consider what your actual goals are when it comes to sailing and be realistic. Sometimes something like this motor yacht can actually be better uh, for an older couple that really just wants to kick back in the Caribbean, do a little bit of motoring around, uh, enjoy some beaches. These things offer a ton of room. Now, the same would be true for this one due to the age. It's a 1985. And I'm not wrecking you run. I'm not recommending that you run out and buy a motor yacht, but you really, really need to consider what it is you're going to do and be realistic. Most people are so out of touch with what's actually going to transpire on their vessel. It's insane. People have never sailed a single day in their life and they want to run out and buy a boat and they've got all these stipulations as to, you know, what it can and can't do. They've never spent any time at sea. They have no idea what kind of sailing they may or may not like. Don't get, don't pigeonhole yourself into that kind of environment. 
uh, sit down and be realistic. And if you need a friend to come over and punch you in the face, then call up your buddy, have him come over and punch you in the face. Because the reality is most people will spend the majority of their time sitting on a beach somewhere anchored out. And that's perfectly fine. Even someone that's going to circumnavigate the globe. If you set out tomorrow with a plan to circumnavigate the globe over the next five years, you're going to spend most of that time still coastal cruising and island hopping because you only do these long passages occasionally. Even if you string them together, by the time you've done, uh, let's say, a 3,000 nautical mile passage at sea, you're going to hit a port. You're going to have a bunch of repairs that need to be done. You're going to kick back because you're going to be tired. And then it's going to be months until you do your next leg. So again, most of your time is going to be spent marinas, things like that. So I want to make sure that you get a boat that's going to be comfortable for you for what you're going to be doing 90% of the time. And this brings up a great, great segue into some ridiculousness in the world of sailing. The capsize screening formula. Now, this is a number that you're always going to see when you pop on over to sailboat data. So here's a Beneteau Oceanus 473, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, if we scroll down here, you're going to see this number right here, 1.96. Now, in the world of sailing, you're going to read all over the place. Oh my gosh. If you're going to cross oceans, you need a CSF number of under two. That's absolutely ludicrous and ridiculous. Now, let me explain the capsize screening formula. This originally came about in 1979, there was a race called the Fast Net Race, and a whole bunch of people died, and a whole bunch of sailboats went down, and that was when this formula was created. Now, the problem with this formula is that a lower value, it's supposed to indicate, as it says right here, a sailboat that's less likely to capsize. And here's that secret number of two. It's taken as a cutoff for some race committees in the world. However, even as it states right here, it's an arbitrary cutoff. Um, and it was based off boats built in 1979. Now, it does not consider the whole shape or the ballast location. So as it goes on to tell you right here, any two sailboats will have the same two CSF value if their displacement and beam are the same. So they give an example. One could have a light hull with a 50% ballast bulb at the bottom of an eight foot keel. The other could have a heavy, a heavy hull with a 20% ballast and a two foot keel. Now those two boats are going to have the same CSF number. However, the stability of those boats is going to drastically change and be wildly different on those two boats because it doesn't consider the whole shape or the ballast location at all. It's an absurd, ridiculous number. This number should never, ever, ever come into play when you're out boat shopping or looking at boats. I don't care what kind of sailing you want to do. This means nothing. There are far better ways to figure out your boat stability. This is not one of them. This came from the 70s, again, because of the Fastnet race. Now, here's the Fastnet race, 1979, huge race, big, big buildup, blah, blah, blah. So there was 303 yachts that started, 24 were abandoned, abandoned, five were lost and believed to be sunk due to high winds, severe conditions, yada, yada, yada. It was a horrible, horrible race. Um, and it goes on to tell you what the boats were, things like that. Um, here's all the boats that didn't finish that race. It was an insane storm that came out of nowhere. So there's all the boats that didn't finish the race. A whole bunch of people unfortunately passed away in that storm. And that again, that's where the comfort or the CSF number came from. We're not going to ever pay attention to this when we buy a sailboat. There are better ways to figure out the stability of your vessel. The CSF number is not the way to figure it out. And it, you know, right here, this is just Wikipedia. Pulled it up to make it easy for everybody. Two sailboats with the exact same number, they'll drastically be different depending on the hull shape, location of the keel. And in today's day and age with the sailboats that we have, they have completely different hull designs than they did back then. They're flat. They're dual hard trined. They're totally, totally different. Don't pay attention to this number. It's absurd. Now, the next absurd number we're going to look at, it's the comfort ratio. Another ridiculously absurd number that means absolutely nothing. 
Now this again, this was created by Ted Brewer, well-known expert boat designer. Um, you know, he came up with this formula to kind of indicate how comfortable a boat's going to be in waves, basically out at sea. Um, you know, it's again, it's skewed. Vessels 45 and above, this just goes completely out the window. You know, boats 25 and lower, it's completely out the window. Um, so a 56 to have 50 to 60 be a heavy blue water cruiser, 30 to 40, 20 to 30 coastal cruiser, moderate stability, blah, blah, blah. This is an arbitrary number that means absolutely nothing. It's just a simple math formula. Again, it's not taking into account the whole shape, the, the keel location, the ballast depth, nothing. It's just, it's the displacement length of the waterline by the length overall by the beam. it's not taking in to account anything and here's a perfect example again this is the oceanus 473 this has a comfort ratio of almost 25. this is the most uncomfortable boat in my opinion to sail in the open ocean that i've ever seen in my entire life now that doesn't mean that it doesn't sail well because it does it sails phenomenally but because it has this little bit higher comfort ratio what the boat does is the boat rolls. It rolls back and forth, port to starboard, all of the time when you're at sea. And that kind of motion, to me personally, is incredibly uncomfortable. I do not like to just be rolling back and forth for weeks on end on an Atlantic crossing. Now, if we compare this boat, we'll compare it to another one uh, to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So here is a Sun Odyssey 419, a little bit smaller boat. Um, but again, we've got a capsized screening formula. This is above the two and a comfort ratio of 23.05. Now this one had the comfort ratio of, what was it? 24.58. These two boats, even though that's only a one point difference, again, it's not taking into account nearly enough. These two boats sail wildly, wildly different. And just that little one point difference, it should really be about a 50 point difference because this little Genoa 419, in my opinion, it's a much more comfortable sail. Now that's just me personally. I've never been seasick on a vessel in my life, but if I was going to get seasick, it'd be on a boat with a higher comfort ratio because of that kind of motion. It just does not sit well with me. Um, and this little 419, a lot of people go, oh my God, 419. That's not a blue water cruiser. I've had a 419 at 15 knots surfing down 40 foot waves in the Mona Passage. I've got it on film somewhere on my video. I'm filming there at the helm. I'm on night watch. I'm smoking it in this boat. Um, I personally prefer the lighter, faster vessels. It's a better motion at sea for me personally. Um, and if I'm gonna be hitting heavy seas, I can load down the front of the boat to kind of help it slide through the water a bit better. Um, and same thing in the back they can rear up on you because they're small and light but those are a couple there's a lot of things you can do to adjust the way your boat's actually going to sail and again like i've mentioned in previous videos it's always going to come down to the captain of the vessel and how well they are what they're doing most captains suck even experienced captains absolute trash most of the time um so you're going to wind up in these incredibly uncomfortable situations but capsize number comfort ratio absolute garbage numbers and you should never pay attention to them there's better ways to determine those types of things for your sailing and that's something that you should consider is how well is the boat going to handle if it does capsize is it prone to capsizing absolutely you should take those things into account but this is not the way to do it this capsize screening formula number this is not the way to determine those things and same thing with the comfort on a vessel this comfort number this is not the way to figure that out this 473, this 419, they only have a point difference and you might as well be sailing a cruise ship compared to a Navy destroyer. I mean, they're so different in the way that they handle. Those two numbers are just garbage. Again, there's better ways to figure out those things on a sailboat than those two arbitrary, useless numbers. So here we are over on Yacht World, 150K, United States going we're cruising now again this price point i don't want you getting old boats i don't want you to step right into a refit bruce roberts fantastic boat for its day and age for sure uh very pretty boat uh again 
a little bit different layout. The dark wood was really classic. But again, this highlights issues with older boats. They weren't really meant to be worked on. So nothing is easily accessible and it just makes it an absolute nightmare. This is a 1998 boat going up on 25 years old, if my math's correct. Um, and all the little things we tend to look for, right? Looking for rusty anchor chain. Um, things are just looking rough and that's because the age of the vessel. And this guy wants 150K for it. This broker is going to get 15 grand when he sells the boat. And what's he do? Tells us nothing. Lazy broker. Don't get involved with lazy brokers. We need to change the world of sailing to where you need these people to actually start telling you some things in their listing or just don't do business with them. Stop giving your money to people like that. Uh, there's better deserving people in the world. Now, we've got an Oceanus 50. I love the Oceanus 50. We covered it in yesterday's video. There's a couple for less money. Again, you can pull up the spreadsheet and compare it if you would like to. Uh, what in the world just happened? Um, so you can compare it if you want to. I love these boats. They'll take you anywhere in the world you want to go, and they're huge. But 150 for a 2001. So again, what are we going to instantly be looking at? We come right down here. Did you give us any information? No, nope, you didn't give us sh about the boat. All right, I'm still holding out hope. Going down to other details. Oh, my Lanta, you really gave me nothing. So again, stop doing business with brokers like this. They don't deserve your commission or your money. They're going to make $15,000 off the sale of this boat, and they can't even give you any information. Stop it. This isn't a one horse town, and there's other brokers you can work with. Um, so Sparksman, Sparkman and Stevens Vessel, again, we're not going for, we just want a fractional rig sloop. It's super easy to sail. We don't want to get involved with multiple sales and multiple mounts. Don't do it. So no catches, nothing like that. Don't do that. Uh, this is a race boat. We're not in the Bendy Globe. This looks really cool though, uh, but we're not going after it. I mean, I guess you could blow up an air mattress here, call it a day. Uh, this bad boy is fast as a mofo, um, you know, and that brings up, you know, probably can't find it on sailboat data, but I'd be interested to see, um, you know, what the capsize screen ratio was on this boat. Um, so let me check really quick. So here we are on sailboat data. We've got it. Um, you know, again, none of this matters. I was just looking for, uh, so it's under two, which is neither here nor there. And this really doesn't matter. Uh, because the, the keel on this thing is wildly different. So that's a case where that number doesn't mean anything. And again, we're, we're too far up in price for, you know, boats that are 33 years old. We're not going to do it. Uh, the 423 I've discussed at length in multiple videos now. And if you're following along, you should know there's better boats out there, especially for this price range. The biggest thing, or one of the big things is the single helm. This price point, get a dual helm. Again, I discussed that in yesterday's video, the differences between single and dual helms. So we're not going to be looking at the 423 if our budget's 150K. Um, a Saga 409. Again, it's a 2006. This kind of money, what I'm really looking for, I'm looking for a 2010 or newer. I'm trying to get a boat under 15 years old if I'm going to spend this kind of money because Remember, 20 years, we're going to step right into a pretty big refit. I don't want to do that right when I get my sailboat. I want to just go enjoy the Caribbean and drink some pina coladas and explore some new cultures. Um, so this meets that criteria. It's a 379, though. Now, she's a little bit smaller, and you'd really have to consider things. I love the 379. It's a fantastic vessel. It's got a very uncluttered deck. Nice little swim platform. However, I personally do, I enjoy the swim platforms that go the whole width of the beam on the vessel and just fold down. I'm not a big fan of this step and then the walk through transom, but that's just a personal thing. Uh, it could be neither here nor there for you. Your typical sailboat interior. Now this table, it lays flat on the vessel and creates a giant queen size bed right there. So keep that in mind. Now we're moving, we're shaking, we're baking. What in the world? Thought I was looking at two different boats there for a second. Um, just your standard little 379. Now again, 150 grand for a 379. Now if we hop over on an X charter site, um, let's see if we can actually find that. We'll go length, low to high. Let's see if we can find a 379. So we got the 349, that's the younger sister. And then we have the newer one, which is the 389. Now here's a 2018 389. And this is what I'm talking about as far as a swim platform. I prefer the swim platforms that fold down. So this one's 150 
it's in Croatia. So, but just as an example, and you get a 2018 for the same price as a 2013 and the older model. So what are we going to do? <laughs> We're going for the 2018. I mean, it's a no brainer. Um, you know, here's a 389 for 115 grand. <laughs> are you kidding me right now? Um, you know, you got the full swim platform there. It's 115 grand, save 35 grand. I mean, it's, you know, you get a boat several years newer, five years newer. It's the newer model, um, the 2018 charter. So again, keep that in mind. A lot of travel restrictions in 2019, 20 and 21, boat probably only spent two years in charter and you get it for 45 grand less than this one. This boat, I can assure you has nothing that would lead you to believe it's worth 45 thousand dollars more than the X charter it just doesn't make any sense um you know and again this guy just copied and pasted right from the you know uh website so I really I'm gonna harp on that a bunch today I want you guys to stop spending your money with people like this that can't put any effort into their listing so that's a no-brainer we do the X charter 389 five years newer newer model 45 grand less makes sense let me know in the comments if that makes sense to you I hope it does because if not uh, I'm in trouble. All right. So we're cruising. We're shaking. We got the Hans 385. Again, it's a 2013 385. Um, Hans, I call them the Apple of sailboats. Again, it, for me, they're not laid out very user friendly. I'm six foot tall and I hit everything on this boat with my face, including this companionway right here. This is too small and the steps going down, they don't, they have a, uh, not a very big angle so you tend to step forward and i hit my face right there um it just happens on all the hanses for whatever reason but i love the 385s and i even like the squared off look um this is problematic with your chart right here that's a useless chart plotter it's too small the biggest chart plotter you can get is what you should get for your boat the bigger the chart plotter the better at night when you're out there and it's pitch black you need something big to see um, you got to dim it, turn on your red lights in the cockpit, but, uh, yeah, so here it is. They did a nice job here because you can get in to this couch right here. A lot of boats, it's a pain in the butt. They got a big rounded table right here and you got to kind of turn your body into the shape of a Z <laughs> and try to tuck underneath it. But again, for 151 grand, we're not doing that. Why is that in Portugal? Why didn't I adjust this country? United States, my bad. Go to United States. All right, we're gonna catch up here. So four, two, three, no. Saga, no. Pop-ups, no. No catches, four, two, three, no. All right, cruising, shaking, bacon. Now I've lost my other boat. Uh, Hunter, four, six, six. Now this will be a good comparison. This one's 154 grand. Uh, Hunters, generally speaking, as you guys should all know by now, they make great use of their space on the interior of the vessel. So let's book right to the interior. That's a stock photo. Seriously, dude, you absolute potato for brains. Uh, a five horsepower. So this is useless. A lot of places you can't even get past the current with that kind of uh, engine. But the typical wide open. Again, I love these two captain chairs here. I'm a huge fan. If it was me, I would launch this backrest on this little... Uh, seating thing right here and I'd use it as a footrest. This table I would remove uh, and I'd make it a little bit smaller. You could probably just route the edges there and re-finish uh, the end of it. The steps on the hunters I'm not a big fan of. They're pretty steep. The less steps you have, this is an easy way to tell if it's steep or not. The less steps that you have, the less of an angle it has. The more steps, the steeper the angle. We want to go for a boat with uh, less angle there. It's got the nice little kitchen. Tuck yourself in right there. Uh, go right back to a nice big storage area. Another stock photo. You absolute potato for brains. So let's hop on over to sailboat data. We'll take a look at this one really, really quick. Here we are on our favorite website, sailboat data. All right. What I tell you yesterday, we're trying to get one with less than a six foot discrepancy, ideally under five. And the closer we can get the length of the waterline versus length overall, the better. And then again, that 40 foot is a breaking point. So if I'm buying a boat that has a length overall above 40 feet, I want my length of the waterline to also be above 40 feet because now I've reached a premium price point in slips. So this one doesn't meet that criteria. It kind of bridges right there in the gap and it's got 
over a six foot discrepancy. It's just too much. They did nice with the 14 foot beam first built in 2002. This one was the first year it was built. That's why it has such a big discrepancy. The further back you go when it goes to looking at sailboats, the larger those two numbers are going to be. So it's not really a 46 foot boat. It's a 40 foot boat. Uh, and the Oceanus 41 or something like that would be better. And you can find those all day long. So this, uh, even this 419, but this Oceanus 45, 41s, things like that. Let's see if we can adjust price low to high. There we go. Okay. So let's see here. It should be a 41 on here because the Oceanus 41 is fantastic. You can find one, but it looks like it's all. Oh, here we go. So here's one. The Oceanus 41. I'm going to pull this up on sailboat data just to compare it because if you can't afford the Oceanus 41, if you're buying a 40 footer, I want you to try to get as close of a whole shape and design as you can to the Oceanus 41. Let me go pull it up really quick. So here we are, sailboat data, boom, the Oceanus 41. 37, 40, 62. Now you can still slip right into uh, a 40 foot slip because you're just barely going over. Uh, only by a couple of inches. We're just going to tuck that bad boy right in our slip. But we've only got a three foot discrepancy. So that's nice. Like three and a half feet or something like that. That's really what we're going for. And if you're looking for a 40 foot boat, these are kind of the numbers you're looking at. Little three foot discrepancy between the two. Now the newer model of the 41, I believe, if I remember correctly off the top of my head, hopefully I won't look like an idiot. Um, I believe it's even less. It's the Oceanus 41.1. Uh, it's just a little bit of a change on the vessel. See if we can find one here. Ba -dum -bum -bum. A lot of 41s. Okay, I don't see it, but I'm going to pull it up on sailboat data just so you can see what I'm talking about. The Oceanus 41.1. All right, let's see if I look like an idiot. Nope, same thing. Yeah, so she falls right in there too. Um, so that's kind of what you're going for if you're looking for a 40-foot vessel. You want to get something really, really close to that 40-foot mark so we can tuck right into 40-foot slips. Nobody will be the wiser. Uh, we want to keep it right around that three foot, three and a half foot discrepancy if we're going for a 13 or a 40 foot boat. So just keep that in mind. Now, again, we're not doing old boats. Not happening. Um, cruising, we're shaking. Again, Hunter Passage, too old for that kind of money because you can pick up stuff like that far, far newer. 2018, 150K. It's going to be as big, if not bigger, um, than this Hunter Passage. So keep that in mind. Now we got the 423. Again, we don't do those, not for this price range due to the age of the vessel. And it's also a single helm. This Bristol is probably really, really pretty. This color I love. I like that color. That's a great color for a hole. Look, looks like trash already. Now, what have I taught you so far already just in the last week? We look at the overall condition of the vessel based off the images initially to see if it's worth continuing further. This boat, just based off that original dirt, I wouldn't continue it further. Now we can go down. I mean, this boat would never be a boat I'd buy anyway, but just as a general example um, of things I'm looking for. It looks like trash right here. Someone's not taking care of stuff. All this running rigging needs to be replaced. No good. And I would expect that on a boat from 1987. Someone's going to go, oh my God, the teak's pretty. No, it's not. It's a backbreaker. Engine compartment looks like trash. Again, older the vessel, harder it is to work on them. And you can see that here with this really, really small engine compartment. So just highlighting a couple things. No need to go down that rabbit hole. Uh, the Amel. Amels are fantastic boats. They also carry that price, but this one's too old. And it's also a catch. So we're not going to get into a boat with a higher running cost and a more difficult sail plan to solo sail. Whenever you're buying a sailboat, you always need to look at it from a standpoint of can you solo sail the vessel? Because there's going to be times you're with your spouse and he or she is sick and you're stuck helming. So if it's somebody's wife that is all of a sudden stuck helming and her husband's down below and he's sick with food poisoning or something, she's got to be able to get up there, grab the helm and get that job done. Uh, if it's a father and a son out there, and the dad's sick. The son's got to be able to get up there, get the job done. You don't want a complicated catch sail plan. It's much easier with a fractional rig sloop. Again, another 423. There's just much better boats. That's a 423 for 155. We would just grab a 419 uh, or an Oceanus 41 or something from X Charter. That's all. I mean, it just, it makes the most sense. You just, you can't deny it. Uh, reduce six grand. I mean, these X Charters, like I was showing you yesterday, 
they've got huge price deductions. Keep in mind the year, anything 2017 probably gonna have prior hurricane damage. I'm not saying to buy it or not buy it, just be aware of it. I discussed that yesterday. All the 2018s won't have them. So that's what we're doing here. If you fall into this 150K price bracket, X Charger is really the way to go. I don't have anything to do with moorings. As a matter of fact, I hate some of their employees, but they just happen to have the best boats on the market. A lot of times people will ask me, now how does moorings sell these boats so cheap? First of all, Moorings buys in bulk. When they're buying their fleet the next year, it usually comes in in November. The closer you get to November, the bigger the price drops you're going to see. Um, and like an Oceana is 41 from a private owner, it's going to be like 230K. So you're going to save about 80 grand right there. So huge price drops, $20,000 price drop, $5,000 price drop, uh, 14, 34, 21. 34, 15 grand, $60,000 price drop. I mean, we've got huge price drops here. You're just doing yourself a disservice. I mean, if you want to do a refit and you want a awesome foundation for super cheap, here's a Beneteau 50 for 30 grand. You could probably pick that boat up for 15 grand in reality. Um, and Oceanus 48 reduced 22K. So again, if you're in this $150,000 range, X Charter, just do yourself a favor. Do the X Charter. Uh, we got the 439 Genoa for 158K. Again, the charters, you're going to be able to find something similar and far, far newer uh, for that kind of money. Be like an Oceanus 45 or something. Um, and you'll be really close to the price on this one. At the 150K price point, that's just a weird price point where it's really just going to nine times out of 10 be better off to just buy an X charter. That way you don't have to, you know, go down the rabbit hole of uh, previous owners. But again, when we're looking at listings, we're looking at overall condition. Anchor locker looks nice and clean there. Fairly small chart plotter, nice and clean here. The problem with the Juno 349, this little table, it doesn't move. It's just stuck there all the time. It's a nightmare. This thing should fold down and create a long couch right there. Just would have been much, much better and made a better use of their space. This little splash screen's also stupid. I would just say to get rid of it, makes no sense to me. Um, yeah, so just your typical 439, nice boat. I'm sure it's great. Let's see, told me nothing there, thanks. Did you tell me something? Has been an offshore, oh, okay, so you did tell me something. It's been an offshore sailing school training vessel since she was commissioned. Okay, so I know that, all right. Uh, so this guy told me a couple things, that's nice. Uh, ba -dum -bum -ba. Yeah, so he gave me some years and things, so good for him. But again, currently with the current market, and this isn't always going to be true, but today's market, right day, right now today, uh, 10, 27, 2023, it's just, you're going to be better off going with an X Charter vessel. Um, so we got the 100 Dexalon. Love Dexalons. Again, we fall into a funky year. Now, the Dexalon is usually a bonus. It depends on how you look at it and what your needs are. So this might be one that you could consider instead of a newer charter vessel because she is the deck salon. But again, it's going to depend on the vessel. We do get this single helm. Unfortunately, you can offset that with it being a deck salon and the cockpit's a decent size. This helm wheel is far too big. I know it folds, but it's too big. You just don't need one that big. Um, you're not helming from the water where you need to reach over. So small chart, small chart plotter. Again, always go for bigger. Bigger is better. Basically everything in life. But uh, especially with chart plotters. Looking a little bit rough and dirty here. Let's get to the interior. There she is. Nice, wide open, clean. Now, is this going to be better than something of a similar size? It really just depends on how it feels to you. This one's going to come down to a personal preference. But it is a 44 Dexalon. It falls into that funny category of a 39-ish length of the waterline. 44 overall or something. But we're going to go over to sailboat data. We'll pull it up. Here we are. Boom. Just like I said. It's almost like I've done this before. Like I said, 39 under, you fall in that funny gap of breaking your length of the waterline right at that breaking point of the marina slip and going above your length overall. Probably doesn't make sense if you didn't watch yesterday's video. Go watch yesterday's video. That will make a lot more sense. All right. The Benadryl 43. She has a 2010. But for this kind of money, what are we doing? No next charters. Makes no sense not to. Uh, and from here up until about 185 grand, we're just going to see a lot of the same boats being recycled. Not the exact same boat, but the same make and models. Um, we've got another Oceanus 50 here. That wouldn't make any sense because, again, we get better deals on charters. Um, 
because the ocean is 50 we'll pull that up on sailboat data here really quick let's do that one second let's hop over there and pull that up so here's the Beneteau 50. Now, because of the year of the vessel, you've got this giant discrepancy. Remember, the closer you get to the 2000 cutoff point and the older you get, uh, the larger the discrepancy these two numbers are going to be. This boat's only got a length of waterline of 45 and a half feet. She got a beam of 14 and a half feet. That's a huge beam, which is awesome. Uh, but they do want 160 grand for that. So if we pop on over to moorings here. What's a boat that's going to be similar? Uh, price wise and size wise they want 160 grand for that thing so if we hop over to the x charter worlds and we start looking oh look we get a 2013 sun odyssey 509 so let's pull that up on sailboat data just so you can see what i'm talking about so here we are on the 509 now a 45 and a 50 and a half this is nice because you can probably tuck right into a 50 foot slip um so you didn't go too far above you might be okay with your normal slip prices uh you know in about a five foot discrepancy there versus the seven foot discrepancy on the oceanus so keep that in mind um now this this probably has hurricane damage because it's 2013 uh you know big big hurricanes 2017 yeah there it is i'm not saying to buy it or don't buy it it's just something to point out um but that oceanus is a hundred and uh why isn't this being adjusted by price let's do this price low to high let's go here uh that oceanus was what was it 160k all right so we're cruising over here so 160k is gonna get me what let's see what i can get on the x charter so i could do a oceanus 48 uh sunless 479 i can do a the 519 this is a fifty four thousand dollar price drop what in the world is happening there it's a huge price drop but that's that 519 uh, this is the newer version than the four than the five oh nine. So let me pull this one up and uh we'll look at the specs on that one. And here we are. We got the five one nine. Um so we're kind of at a funny breaking point. You know, you hit that above fifty foot slip thing. Forty five point six seven the length of the waterline. It's the exact same as the five oh nine. So they didn't really do much there. It's got a fifteen point three three beam. So it's, it's probably the same hull, and they just uh, changed a few things on it, then called it a new model. Uh, so let's see here. So we got some 509s, some 519s. Um, even this Oceanus 48, this will probably come in similar to size. It's a much, much newer design than the 509 for sure. Um, let's pull that up really quick, because that's... That falls right in like the same price. Where did it go? Here's one. Boom. 165. So same price. You get a newer boat. 2017. Just an example. It's got the factory arch. That arch is phenomenal. If anybody ever gets a boat with an arch like that, turn this into a hard top. Launch this bimini. Get rid of it. Throw it in the trash. It's out of here. Uh, do another arch like this right back here. And then just do a hard top. Boom. And then you can enclose it on the side if you want to. Uh, and create yourself a nice outdoor livable space. So it's just your X charter. Uh, looks like trash in that picture. But the 48, we'll go over to Sable Data. We'll check it out. Here we are looking at the ocean. It's 48. That's a really, really pretty hull color. I wish more sailboats did color. Uh, just looks better. So 43, 15.5, bigger beam than the other ones. A little bit less length of the waterline. But you're under that 50 foot breaking point. So this boat's going to feel probably bigger than the 509 uh, in the long run. And probably bigger than the 509 as well. Because uh, we had a length of waterline 45.67. The Oceanus is coming in at 43. Not a huge difference. Plus, you gain a little bit of room there in the beam throughout the length of the vessel. It's probably going to come in feeling a little bit bigger. So, continuing the hunt that we go. Now, nothing on the market's looking amazing. In reality, like I said, the X Charters are going to beat all these boats so far, especially in this 100, probably 100 to. 150 to 185k range the x charters are really going to smoke it it's really about 110 to 180k but uh you know this is absolutely ridiculous at 42 mk2 for 165 is absurd the oceanus 40 my old boat love them they're fantastic but it should be a hundred thousand dollar boat not a hundred and sixty five thousand dollar boat so we're too high priced it's definitely a seller's market in the world of retail i guess they'll call it used retail boat market 
Uh, as you know, 43. Just too much money. Then we got the Dexalon. Dexalons are great. This one's been for sale for a very, very long time. And if I remember, it's got a bunch of issues, but I don't remember. So, you know, not like the broker is going to tell me anything. Because again, what do we need to do? We need to stop doing business with brokers that aren't telling us much. That boat's, that's too much money. That's like a 36 foot boat. Uh, so again, we'd stay away from that. Now we got a little Admiral 38 catamaran. Catamarans can be fantastic for the Caribbean. If you're just going to cruise the Caribbean, you want to hang out, enjoy life, kick back, drink Mai Tais, launch all this stuff. That's stupid. Um, here's a fancy tip. If you pull into a slip like this, this is adding to your length overall. They're going to charge you more at a lot of slips. So keep that in mind. Foldable solar. I just I don't like anything about this. A lot of times people think that solar panels add value. So here's the problem with solar panels. They actually wear out fairly quick. This one's got a bunch of debris and stuff. You know, solar panels are not the most efficient, even right out of the box. So the more debris build up, the more corrosion on the best on the solar, the less uh, efficient they are. What the f is going on here? This is insane. What the world? Uh, nice big cockpit, but that all that stuff's got to go. What is this sink? This is just dumb and useless. I don't like this at all. Uh, might work for you, but I don't like it at all. Looks, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't deal with it. It's hurting my brain already. Four, two, three. We already know, ladies and gents. It's too old. It's a single helm. It's too much money. Again, we're not doing cutters and things like that. This big bow sprit you'd pay for in a marina because you get charged length over all the 473 that's about in line with what they should be it's a vessel that can get you all over the world but again because the age in my opinion it's just had too many previous owners uh, i've done a lot of miles on a 473 i don't like the way that they feel when they sail it doesn't mean they're bad that's just me so but until first it's the racer so we can keep on cruising up here in price let's see what we got for just a second so you know we're just not looking just for this price. I mean, coming up on November, the X charters are always going to smoke the used boat market. Another little catamaran, probably great for coastal cruise and island hopping. Uh, not much more than that, but a lot of deck space there, which is great. You've even got a little trampoline. You know, this would be perfect for the islands, just cruising around. Uh, you know, not a huge cockpit or anything, but not tiny. A little seat there. I mean, this might be fun. It's got the dual outboard, so engines easy to work on, inexpensive, perfect for the Caribbean. Just kick back, hang out, enjoy your life, grab some Mai Tais, meet some people, I'll try some different foods. We get to the interior of the boat, thank you. Yeah, just your typical smaller catamaran look. You'd have to get on this vessel and see uh, as far as livable space goes in the headroom here. Um, yeah, I think it's a two cabin. Oh, might be a three. Nope, that's the master. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I like it. It's expensive, you know. The 35 Legacy usually goes for about this price as well. So that'd be one to, to compare to that if that's what you're into. We got the uh, 2008 Oceanus 40 again, right around 100 grand where we want to pick up the 40 at. Just not worth that kind of money. Now we got the little 349. Fantastic solo sailor. Uh, hitting the islands great little boat but it is little but it's laid out very homey it's comfortable user friendly love these boats but that's just a ton of money you know like i said that 150 to 185 range x charters gonna be the way to go now, did these guys have any uh any uh three four nines let's see really really quick again i don't have anything to do with moorings i don't even like half their employees but uh so we got, yeah, there's a 349, 104 grand. Here's a 389, it's even bigger for 105. Another 349, 105, 105. Oceanus 41, 110. Uh, so again, this would make no sense. Where'd it go? Where'd my 34, there it is. Um, that would make no sense. You're not gonna buy it because it's privately owned and pay 70 grand more, that's stupid. You can't ever justify that. Not even in your own brain. That's ridiculous. Don't do that. Uh, so we're cruising. We're bruising. So that's what it's going to be. Uh, all the way up. 
probably until we get right around 200k, there's just not going to be a ton that's going to make any kind of sense. The 30.1, this is like the smallest dual helm vessel you can get, but it's so light. If you walk from one side to the other, the whole boat tips. It's a doozy. Uh, things to keep in mind. This is just like your little day sailor, lake sailor, and that's a lot of money for that. But hey, if that's what you're going for, it's a great little boat. Uh, we got another 473. Now, usually the 473 is outfitted for world cruising. By this time, uh, you're coming up on 20 years old, and maybe the uh, broker will tell you something. Nope. That's all copy and pasted nonsense. Uh, let's see here. Other details. We'll be turning. Uh, so he's telling you some stuff. New life tariff. For, what? Don't don't try to key word stupid shit. That's stupid. Terra firma as Claude's cruisers living. Just shut up, man. That, I shouldn't use that language. Sorry. Uh, so. Yep. Not telling you much. Additional custom storage. A 21 inch flat screen in 2014. Do you know how much 21 inch flat screen is? It's like $35 at Walmart, man. Knock it off. Uh, so I'm not really, really seeing much. I'm irritated with this broker already by that stupid word, Claude's. Cruiser's living under it. Shut up. Um, so he does tell you some stuff, but not, I mean, I'm not seeing, I wouldn't, you know, all of our foundational stuff's not really on here. Maybe it is here. Doesn't tell me when. We need dates, you clown. Dates. How old's the solar? So it looks all great. The guy actually listed out everything, but just didn't tell me dates. We're not going for stuff like that. That guy's an idiot. Claude's. What a dumbass. Um, so we're cruising. We're bruising. Another hunter. Dexalon. Again, falls in that funny category. Catalina's 375. Not a million years. And here's the Gemini Freestyle 37. Now, this isn't the Legacy 37, so this is not meant for living aboard. This is just meant for going out, drinking too much, and anchoring at the beach, and maybe sleeping in here for the night. It's not meant for anything else than that. It's very, very pretty. It's kind of like your booze cruise type of a boat. It's not a sail, not really a sailboat for long term or anything. The 35 Legacy is what you're going for. Catalina 355, absolutely not. Another overpriced Oceanus 40. The 2009 Oceanus 43 for 183 grand. You could just plop on over here to the X Charters and grab yourself a, uh, you know, Oceanus 41 or something. The 419. You could even get a 469. Uh, for that kind of money. So you get a 41, a 469, a 509. Uh, a lot of boats to choose from. And again, I'm not going in depth on these listings. I'm just kind of breezing over them and showing you. So I'm not recommending you run out and buy any of these boats. Um, grab the spreadsheet off the website. It's only 10 bucks. And, uh, you know, put in the work and the effort and do some research. That's a 2020 37 Cruiser. That's a brand new boat. Um, that's interesting. You usually don't see boats that new. But the Bavarias, they make about the worst use of space on a vessel, in my opinion, uh, that I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I saw this boat at Annapolis last year, I think. <laughs> I, I couldn't even get around the table. And a lot of people are like, oh my god, I love the boat. Uh, I can't stand this boat. Uh, it's too small and too narrow, and they tried to put too much into the boat. It's got fake teak, so that's a plus. Come on, man. Let's get to the inside of the boat for cheapers. There we go. Typical boat. So I wouldn't spend this kind of money just because it's 2020. I'd get a 2015 or something or 18 something, save myself 50 grand and do some upgrades. Kelly 35, we're not doing. And here we are right at that 185 price point. So we'd have to go all the way to probably 200K um, to get anything that's going to make sense besides the X charters. Another overpriced 27 or 473. Again, you're going to start to see a lot of the same boats are popping up. What's this? A 2011 Sun Odyssey 409 for 190 grand. Remember, you can pick up the newer model for less right on the website. Uh, you could do the uh, 419, which is the newer model for 140 grand. No worries. Just a quick, uh, you know, huge savings there. So don't don't be doing that stuff. At least do yourself the favor, check out the X charters beforehand. And here we are, we're basically at 200K now. So again, even at this price range, these kind of boats, you'd just grab an X charter. You're gonna save 50, 60, 70 grand. Now this is 2021, 319. We're not 
spending 200 grand on day sailors. That's too much. Uh, these are the guys that always adjust there. <laughs> they change out the sky. I mean, hats off to them for that. Uh, we got the Oceanus family. We're not doing that uh, too old. We're too much money. We got to be really, really picky here. Uh, and a 99 Island Pack at 380 ain't it. Here again, the 409 for 200 grand. You do the 419 for 140 grand. Save 60 grand. You're welcome. Uh, just send me uh, the difference to my PayPal. Link down below. Appreciate it. Uh, a big 50 for 200 grand, but you know and I know if you've been following along for the last week, you can pick these up for about 50k less, even from private owners. So unless this boat's smoking uh, and has, you know, a ton of upgrades, then uh, it's got the two cabin. Wow. Impressive. Um, let's see here. Other details. Nope. Not telling me much. Nope. Nope. You copied and pasted. Okay. Here we go. Nope. Ah. Yeah. You didn't. <laughs> oh man a lot of stock info here but you're just yeah you didn't tell me anything again what are we doing we're not doing we're, we're done doing business with brokers that can't do their job so there we are we covered whatever it was 150 to 200k hopefully today you learned that you know it's gonna make a bunch more sense to go uh with an ex-charter you know now I can do a specific video on budget catamarans, you know, because budget catamarans are about 150 to 250 K be happy to do those kind of videos for you. Let me know in the comments below again. Don't forget to subscribe for my Patreon. It's only $10 a month. Really, really helps the videos keep going. Super chats are always appreciated. Uh, I think I'm going to live stream. So if you catch this video in a premiere, I'm going to post in the comments to let you know if I'm going to live stream right after this. And if I do live stream, I'll be happy to answer all questions. Take a look at boats with you one-on-one -on -one live during my live stream. So hopefully you tune to that one. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe. Thank you so, so much for watching. <laughs>